Hey you guys, it's me Danielle, if you're new here. I am doing a verbal recording because it's late, uh, my time, and I just don't feel like being in front of the camera. So anyway, I wanted to come out here and give you guys a dream that I had last night, okay? And I know this probably applies to many within the body of Mashiach, okay? Because we all know that the spiritual warfare has been incredibly heavy and there have been, you know, numerous attacks on those who are within the body of Mashiach. And I'm not talking about fans of the Messiah and fans that like to call themselves um, knowing Yahua, you know, knowing Yahushua and, you know, walking in his ways and all that kind of stuff. You know, there are really people that are really abiding in Yahuwah and Yahuwah is abiding in them. There are people that are really laying down their lives and surrendering their lives as they should to the call of the Most High Yah. And there are some people that like to proclaim that and it's just simply false. Okay. They're about as false as the false teachers out here, about as false as the prosperity gospel or good news in the word of faith movement. Do you catch what I'm saying? And so I wanted to come out here because I know some people too don't understand or maybe experiencing situations where some people who call themselves followers are simply trying to get a rise out of you, you know, um, through spiritual manipulation. Um, some people don't realize that they're being, um, spiritually attacked um, by the people that are very much around them um, you know and pretty much probably the people around you near or far that are keeping tabs on you or monitoring you or whatever the case and be people that are jealous people you don't even speak to anymore that just don't have the best um, intentions for you you know and when I say the best intentions, they just don't, you know, they don't really wish you well. They may smile and shin and grin, as one of my old friends used to say, shin and grin in your face, but they really are not for you. And so for those of you who have, who have been experiencing, you know, the increased warfare or setbacks or the attacks or you feel like you're moving 10 steps ahead and being pushed back because of all of the attacks coming up against you just because you're choosing to follow and be a truth teller, if you will, and truly, you know, walk in the calling. Thank you, Father. The calling in which the Father has called you into. Okay, whatever that may be. You know, I'm not really going to get into anointings and mantles and things like that. I'm just simply saying, you know, we all have a calling on our lives and our path may not look like the next person's path. And so people may try to judge you or have something to say or mock or slander, or whatever the case may be, make fun of, have their own natural understanding, uh, but no real spiritual or wisdom or a spiritual discernment coming from the Holy Spirit. So they're using their natural mind to try to wrap their mind around your walk in having something to say about your walk when your walk has nothing to do with them, nor is your um, identity in their opinions. Okay. Your identity is never in people, places, and things. It is in Abba Yahua. So you might have people around you that are looking down on you because their identity is in the worldly things, in the status of what they drive, in the status of what they wear in the status of what they own in the status of the title that is given to them by the world system as far as what their title is for their position okay hear me and hear me well none of that stuff matters none of that stuff matters and majority of these people walking around here that needs all of that to validate them really are insecure okay they're really insecure beings who really don't know themselves, nor do they have a relationship with our Heavenly Father. Because if they did, then they wouldn't be so tied up and tied to, thank you, Holy Spirit, 
tied up and tied to the things of this world because he already tells you that the world, um, the worldly things is not of him. Okay. But you got all these people around here so stuck in the world and worldly things and worldly ways and worldly mindsets that you sicken out like a sore thumb and they're irritated by you possibly walking the path that you're walking on. And because you have so much spiritual warfare, because you're doing something completely opposite of what your family may be doing or your friends may be doing, co-workers, spouse, whatever, brother, sister, siblings, uncles, aunties, nieces, nephews, because you're choosing to separate and be set apart like y'all has called you to be because you are a peculiar people in a holy, you know, nation amongst, um, to our father, right? We're set apart for his will and his way. And I hope I said a holy nation, right? That scripture. And I have to go find it. I might link it belong below because I probably just messed it up because I wasn't even planning on going here. So apparently I guess the Holy Spirit wanted me to say these things. Do not let these people, these spirits, these spirits and these demonic spirits at that operating in the vessels of people try to define you by their ways of living, by their ways in which they think with their natural, simple minds. And I'm going to say it again, natural, simple minded people who claim and profess that they have wisdom. People can say that they have it all day long. And just because you're old or older does not make you wise. I've seen some young kids wiser than older people. Okay. And majority of the people that may have something to say about you has really nothing to do with you. It's their own insecurities and they feel threatened by you and your existence and your walk and they're envious and they're jealous and they wish that they had the, um, the strength. Okay. The endurance, the spiritual grit, the determination and the Holy Spirit. Okay really dwelling in them like it is dwelling in you. But see, they don't understand why it's not happening for them in the same way it's happening for you and why they don't feel that closeness with our creator is because they simply are stiff-necked individuals and hard-headed people. Okay, so majority of the people that are probably around you are stiff necked and hard headed are the ones that are mainly having something probably to say about you or your walk, whether to your face or behind your back. So don't let them get to you because they're nothing but a piece of dust at the end of the day. Okay. Um, yes, we are called to love people, but we can love them from afar and love is an action. So let me be clear. Because, you know, you have people that know the word, just like the enemy knows the word, but they'll try to manipulate it and flip it around um, for their own self-gratification and to be manipulative. And so, yes, we are called to love. However, love does not boast. Love is not abusive. Um, love is not to be, you know, all prideful and boasting in oneself and their accomplishments. Love is an action. It's not what people say. It's also what they do. Okay. Um, one thing that the Heavenly Father also spoke to me about a while back is you have people that are walking around that could be probably around you guys or amongst you guys as well, that their heart stance is not in the right place when it comes to you. Their motives and when they do stuff is not in a heart's posture of really um, wanting to do good out of the genuineness and the authenticity of love and doing it, you know, out of love is more coming from a place of doing it out of control and they have a wicked and perverse heart. 
Okay, so the motives behind what they're doing, which a lot of people do stuff and they think that they're just going to enter the kingdom of heaven because they do good works, but their heart posture is in the wrong place. So it don't even matter. Their heart is crooked. It's wicked and perverse. And my father has really been highlighting that. And I know I deal with that in my own um, family units, you know, and people in my family that... And I'm pretty sure some of you guys may deal with the same. Okay. And I don't even try to, um, stay in close proximity because I have been shown, you know, certain things, but I'm not going to really go into all of that. So when the father has shown you certain things with family members and different things like that, you know, take heed to that. But I wanted to come out here and give again, the message that I had in a dream last night. And last night I had a dream, I'm not going to go into all of it, but I thought it was so profound this morning because my father, he sees everything and he sees everybody and he will show you what spirit is operating in these temples. Okay. In these vessels. Okay. These self-righteous, self-proclaiming, self-idolizing vessels. That's another thing because most of these individuals want you to idolize them. Okay. And they want to control and manipulate you. But majority of the people that are um, being set apart, they're being called out for a reason. But anyway, the dream last night that I had was that it was a long line of people waiting to go into this building. And it was a sunny day. And when we got inside, it was a funeral. I didn't know what we were lined up for because it was like a parking lot, a building, and you're walking in and you're in line, but I got, and the next thing I know I'm inside me and my child. And there's this portrait, you know, like when they, when someone passes away, they have like a portrait sometimes up with that individual. And it was a lady, um, with a short style haircut, you know, like hair that still, you know, kind of went behind the ears and all that kind of, all kind of stuff and just kind of, um, straightened, flat earned, you know, and she was, then in nature and, you know, had maybe like, um, an outfit on, but it was in a picture, you know, like it was almost like a portrait, but it was a black dress. And what was pointed out in, um, the dream was her name was Cobra. Okay. Cobra, this female woman, Okay. Mind you, in my dream, it was two specific family members of mine in my dream that we also were there to mourn the loss of this person that was either supposed to be close to our family or whatever the case may be. But her name was Cobra. And I just remember seeing the person named um, Cobra in the portrait, you know, it was not like a person we really seeing, but we were mourning a loss. It was a funeral for a person named Cobra, female. And me and my child walked out and I think the rest of the people, you know, were still in there. And then it was like I was out with my child in the parking lot, getting ready to go do something else. And then my dream turned into another scene. So when I woke up this morning, I was like, the Holy Spirit sitting here with myself, like, what was that about? And it was like, I'm putting to death the cobras. Okay. I'm putting to death this venomous spirit. Okay. The serpent spirit, the snake spirit in your life or the people that are around you. I'm about to put to death to that, whether that's physical or whether that's, you know, spiritually or whatever the case may be, or just stopping and removing these individuals um, that are out here that's trying to harm you, like he will put a stop to that. He's deading that, if you will. He's deading these things in your life, okay, and in my life. So it may not be just right now, but he he's watching, and he will do what he said that he's going to do. And so I went to go pull up what was the definition of a cobra, and the definition, meaning of a cobra, I'm looking back up, was a highly venomous snake native to Africa and Asia that spreads the skin of its neck into a hood 
when disturbed. Okay, a highly venomous snake native to Africa and Asia that spreads the skin of its neck into a hood when it's disturbed. Okay, um, it's pretty much you know self explanatory with that. So, I want to go pull up Cobra in scripture. So, let me give you the scriptures that I got for Cobra mentioned in Bible verses. And I'm pulling them back up right now. So this is what I have for you guys. Deuteronomy 32, 33. Their wine is the venom of serpents, a poisonous cobra. And that's the ISV. I'm just pulling up a list. I'm not going like straight to KJV or anything like that. Job 2014. Yet his food in his bowels is turned. It is cobra venom within him. Hear what the word is saying, okay? Job 2016, he shall suck cobra venom, the viper's tongue shall kill him. Psalm 58, 4, they have venom like the venom of a snake, like the death cobra that stops up its ears. Psalms 91, 13, you will tread on the lion and the cobra, you will trample the young lion and the serpent. Isaiah eleven eight. The nursing child will play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child will put his hand on viper's dens. Now, the versions that I just read are HCSB, ISB, NSB. I'm excuse me, NASB and WEB. But I thought this was interesting. Okay, so I just gave y'all the scriptures with cobra. I know the individuals that y'all have showed me in my life, you know, whether near or far, that are venomous and poisonous, you know, very, you know, um, the very ones that you want to keep at bay because they are definitely being used by the enemy to send attacks to you, whether it be witchcraft, you know, whether it be divination, you know, whether they're just being used by the enemy because they won't close certain doors out, because they just can't stand you, because they're envious, because they're jealous, because of um, the calling that has been on your life. And these are usually the very people that when you're, they love to see you when you're down um, and they love to help put you in a pit, just like Joseph. Okay. But however, they have failed to realize that the most high Yahushua HaMashiach is with you every time people try to slander you um, put dirt on your name set plots against you send attacks against you gossip against you slander against you betray you and all of that people think that they have gotten away with that kind of stuff whether it, excuse me, whether it be friends family or foes but he sees all of their wickedness and all their wicked deeds. And he is going to be dealing with these folks. And when he deals with them, and when he deals with them, it's not if, it's when. Hear me and hear me well. It's not if, it's when he deals with them. Please know to stay up out the way. And surely he will remind them of all of the wicked things that they have done, the perverse heart, wicked and perverse heart that they have. Surely he shall remind people and surely he shall bring people to their knees and surely he shall deliver you, okay, from the enemy's snare. Don't forget where your help comes from. Abba Yah, by the Holy Spirit, wanted me to read some more scriptures, um, just even about snakes, okay, in KJV. Um, I did pull up KJV. So it said in Gen Genesis 3, 1 through 24. Now the serpent was. Dang, did it skip? I'm going to say 3, 1 through 24. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord. I'm just going to say which Yahuwa had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, hath. Yahuwah said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, 
Yahweh has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. And we know the serpent here is the enemy, Hasatan. He's a straight demon. So, you know, enemy and serpent, snakes. Is, when you see that, people call that kind of stuff the python spirit. Or, you know, I don't really get into all this kind of stuff, you know, with naming every spirit. But clearly the serpent and snakes and um, things like that, even dogs, because every time... Um, the most high by the Holy Spirit in my dreams. He's been showing me jo dogs with certain people or like dogs attacking them or, you know, or just dogs around, you know, with certain individuals in a dream. And in scripture, dogs are unclean spirits, according, you know, according to scripture. So um, these individuals that y'all may bring to your attention by the Holy Spirit, they're unclean. Their spirit is unclean within them. Okay. And only he can clean them up and they have to return to him and humble themselves and repent. <laughs> but um, verse five, for Yahuwah doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahuwah. <coughs> Excuse the background noise. It's my child. Amongst the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So we know this is when, you know, Adam ends up eating the fruit, you know. From Eve, because we know that the serpent tricked and deceived Eve, and then she went back and um, told Adam to go ahead and do the same thing she just did. But the serpent was an unclean spirit and a deceiver and um, a demon, you know, sent out a whole attack in this regard, right, to take him out. And Yahuwah said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent begilded me and I did eat. And Yahuwah said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy, and thy desire shall be thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. I wasn't planning on reading all this. Just bear with me. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake and sorrow. Shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life? Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And to Adam also, and to his wife, did Yahuwah make coats of skin and clothe them. And Yahuwah said, Behold, this man is become as one of us to know good and evil, and now least he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Yahuwah sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So we see how the enemy shows up 
and he deceives people and he tricks people and he tries to take them off the course, especially the course that our father has set forth. And that's his primary job, right? Mark 16, 18 says, they shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So even though the enemy comes out here like a cobra with his venomous, poisonous ways, trying to get us to drink of his cup, you know, in whichever way that it may be, or trying to poison us through the attacks or um, sending uh, different distractions or, you know, trying to derail the plan that Abi Yahua has. He says that no matter what his people do, it shall not harm them. If we drink of any deadly thing, it shall not hurt us. Okay. So we have to remember that even though the enemy is out here, he may delay, he may um, try to trip us up and things like that, but he shall not prevail over what Yah says in his will. Matthew 10, 16, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Okay. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay. The enemy tries to show up and he may look big and bad and, and cause a lot of dust storms in your life and tornadoes and, you know, hurricanes and disasters. But remember the authority and the authority is the one that lives in you by the Holy Spirit who equips you and he powers you. No matter how many times the enemy sets a trap for you. Our Heavenly Father, if you're being obedient and walking and doing what he tells you to do, he shall raise you up from that pit. He never promised you that we would not go through things. He never promised you that the enemy wouldn't attack you because the enemy only pays attention to the people that are trying to be on the right track with the Father. He sends out a straight target to attack the woman or man and then their seed, their child. Okay. So if he can't get to you necessarily, he will do things to, if you have children, he will try to attack your kids, you know, or, you know, the very things that you care about the most to try to get to you. So understand how the enemy works and put on the full armor of y'all. Acts 28, 3, 5. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hands, on his hand. And when the bar barbarian, excuse me, saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. He shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Okay. Then we, again, he's saying that, you know, even though things may rise up, the Holy Spirit is saying, even though these things will come, these vipers, these serpents, these cobras, you know, these demons, um, these unclean spirits, you shall not be harmed. You might be going through things, but you're not going to be harmed in the end. And even while you're going through the storm, Yahoo is with you. And so I'm going to read Numbers 21, 8 through 9. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he look, excuse me, let me open it, looketh upon it. Where did I go? Okay. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he look up upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Okay. He lived because of the power of the one who holds the power. And that is our father, Abba Yah, you know, and by his Holy Spirit, you know, and through his son, Yahushua HaMashiach, you know, that's where our strength comes from. Okay. He equips us and he already knows all the tactics and tricks of the enemy. I'm not, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead and read these last ones for you. Micah 717, they shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth and they shall be afraid of Yahuwah our, our Yah and shall fear because of thee. Okay. 
Proverbs 23, 32. At the last it biddeth like a serpent, and it stingeth like an adler. Exodus 7, 8, 13. And Yahuwah spoke, or spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so, as Yahuwah had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and became it became a serpent. Excuse me. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men, the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, and he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not unto them as Yahuwah has said. If we go back to verse 12, Exodus 7, 12, for they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Our father already won the victory in all these circumstances. So no matter what mountains you're facing right now, please know, or any snakes that are in your life right now around you, near or far, he will be dealing with them. Because he put in my dream that he's going to be putting to death. Okay. And with that's whichever way he want to see it is, you know, we bought a whole funeral. Okay. For these type of individuals who do not want to turn from their wicked ways. Okay. Who are walking around here with this whole snake like serpent spirit that is trying to come up against you and his plans. It will not prevail. It will not prevail. And I always try to tell people, People need to be a little bit more careful on what they're saying and what they're doing towards certain individuals because they may be a nobody to you, but they are a somebody to Yah. And this goes especially for those who are being obedient, who is tr trying to walk in righteousness and holiness, you know, and, you know, trying to turn away and repent um, from sin, you know, leaving that old man behind trying to walk in the new wine and see these type of individuals don't want you to walk in the new wine they always trying to compare you to the old wine and they dag on try to make you go back by um projection and um gaslighting and you know triangulation and all the narcissistic you know traits and tactics of individuals um those, um, some people call that a Jezebel spirit, these Jezebels that are in your life, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to call them, a demon is a demon is a demon. A unclean spirit is an unclean spirit. Anybody can be used by them. Even the ones that call themselves being a follower or excuse me, they call themselves being a fan of the good news. Okay. Because those are the lukewarm ones that Yahuwah will spit out. So I just want to let you guys know, even though these, um, demons or you know unclean spirits or these um, unclean spirits trying to send attacks to your life the way that my father gave it to me is that he's going to be handling them okay and he's going to be deading those things in your life okay because enough is enough so i hope that that encourages you guys that are on your walk to keep enduring you know love is also love's um as long suffering is one of the fruits of the spirit right and um always remember that love is an action so i think people sometimes get manipulated also with love and when we love people we're supposed to love them as yah loves us okay as he loves us but one thing that i think a lot of people get misconstrued is that um forgiveness for example even though these people come up against you you know and, it, and the enemy wants to harden your heart to forgive these folks because they keep trying your life um, forgiveness is not equal relationship. Forgiveness is not equal relationship. So don't let people try to manipulate you or guilt trip you or, you know, try to love bomb you or, you know, devalue and discard you or whatever the case may be. People, place, and thing. Okay. This can be at work. It can be your family. It could be, uh, friends, um, or just people that don't mean you know well. Okay. Um, 
Don't let these individuals try to define you, your walk, your character by their um, natural understanding. And don't even bother trying to discuss matters that are spiritual, spiritual, that you've gotten spiritual discernment on with those that are foolish and um, unwise when it comes to the things of the spirit. And y'all had really been pressing on me to stop casting my pearls before swine. Don't give what is holy to the dogs. Okay. Hence why I've been having a lot of dreams with dogs and certain people. Okay. Because they unclean to him. All right. Okay. So I pray that this blesses somebody. I wasn't even going to go into that. I wanted to mention this too. It might be off subject. I did have a dream. Um that I didn't put out there too, um, about the cartels and it was the cartels. It's like I was in a house and this is right before I think something even popped up. I was like, really? <laughs> I need to start getting my dreams out a little bit earlier. I think that was before, um, they found like some people, I guess something that popped up on my phone with some people, I guess being kidnapped or whatever. But anyway, the cartels is highlighted and I was in a house, not my house that I'm in now, but it was like, I was out in the street. Um, when I say street, I was in a car. It was like a pickup truck, kind of like cream. And the, the place looked kind of like Nevada, Arizona, you know, just kind of more dust and um, uh, more like, you know, Arizona and Nevada is just like desert. That's what I'm trying to get at. And I was in a house and I was on a phone with someone asking, could they see me? And it was like, yeah, they can see you where you are right now. It's like I was on a phone with the police or something, but I was in a house and somebody was walking through my house and I'm headed towards my laundry room and but they were had guns drawn you know and I was on the phone talking quietly like can they see me there's like the people on the phone were trying to guide me on where to go and that was like the end of that dream um it was a clip you know and then you know that's all I remember going to laundry room it was a different scene and of course they didn't find me at that point but the next thing I know, I think a clip came out on the news, um, which again, I'm, I'm not go out here watching the news. If something pop up on YouTube or every now and again, if the Holy Spirit tells me to go type in the daily news, then I'll follow us, you know, see what's going on, you know, to stay abreast. But I don't let, you know, my mind soak in a lot of things that they're trying to program in our mind. But anyway, I thought I would at least share that, but let this be an encouragement. I'm still going to come out and do the other video that I told you guys that my father really wants me to get out and dealing with the spirit of perversion and how that is looking amongst people, even those who call themselves followers. So y'all be blessed until next time. Shalom.